All right, so now we're heading into function operations. Um, for the most part, I think this is the section that most kids find the most straightforward. Um, so hopefully this little section will be, you know, a little break, a little breath of fresh air as just you review some things that I'm hoping are already sort of clicking in your head. Um, okay, so function operations involve adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing two or more functions to become a new function. You need to be able to do this with numbers, uh, with equations, and with just pictures with no equations, so just the graphs. The trick to the graph is to always remember that what you're doing, you're doing to the y values. The x values are always uh, constant. They stay consistent. They don't change. You don't do anything to the x values. It's the y values that you're adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing or whatever. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> composition of functions refers to making the output of one function become the input of another function. Okay. And you need to be able to do that with numbers and with equations. Okay. So just some uh, uh, ways of writing here that you need to be comfortable with. Uh, if you're adding, it could say f of a plus g of a, or it could say f plus g of a. Okay, if you're subtracting, same thing, it could say f of a minus g of a, or it could say f minus g of a. And I, I would say that most of the time they're going to give it to you like this, and then you should kind of change it into this form, because this is going to give you kind of a better, better visual as to what you have to work with. Uh, multiplication, um, they're either going to say f of a times g of a, or sometimes they just say f times g of a. Sometimes there's a dot in here, a closed dot. Uh, and sometimes there's not. Either way, that means multiplication. Divide, we'd have f over g of a or f of a over g of a. Um, and then composition refers to f composed with g of a or g of, sorry, f of g of a. Now, I do want to make a couple of points here. Number one, this is a non-colored in circle. That is a colored in circle. One means multiplication one means composition. You really want to make sure you know what you're talking about. Don't mix those up because they're entirely different. Uh, number two, I would say more so than not, questions are going to involve subtraction and division over multiplication and addition. The only reason I say that is because the order matters with subtraction and division. Okay, you got to make sure you know who's uh, first and who's second. Addition and, and multiplication, the order doesn't necessarily matter. Then with division as well, you need to make sure you're thinking about non-permissible values if you need to think about those. All right, so if s of x um, equals x squared plus four and t of x is x squared minus two, the value of s times t of four, so that's s of four times t of four, okay, so I could actually figure out what, I mean, I could figure out what the new equation is first if you wanted to, but I don't think um, that's the easiest route to go. I think the easiest route to go is just to figure out what S of 4 is, figure out what T of 4 is, and multiply them together. Okay, so S of 4 is 20, T of 4 is 14. Again, I'm just plugging in 4 for X here. 4 squared is 16 plus 4 is 20, that's where the 20 comes from. 4 squared is 16 minus 2 is 14. Then when I multiply 20 and 14 together, I get 280. So S times T of 4 is 280. Okay. Okay, given the graphs of F of X is the blue guy and G of X is the uh, red guy, uh, which graph represents F of X over G of X? Well, <clears throat> the first thing I would want you to look at is the asymptote, okay? You're going to get an asymptote when g of x is zero because g of x is on the bottom. So right at this point, I would need to have an asymptote at negative two. So I can see that in a and b, so that rules out c and d. Okay, now if I take a look at this, um, really I just need to figure out where am I positive and where am I negative. Okay, so let's look to the left here. I'm going to have a positive divided by a positive which should give me a positive. To the right, I have a positive divided by negative, which should give me a negative. So the answer should be A, um, because over here I'm positive and over here I am negative, okay? All 
right, good. Uh, if f of x equals five minus x and g of x equals two root x, what is the domain of g composed with f of x? Now, you're always gonna be given it like this, but I would never leave it like that. I would write that as g of f of x, okay? So if I write it as g of f of x, What that means is you always want to go into the center and kind of claw your way out. So f of x is 5 minus x. So that's going to be g of 5 minus x. And so that will be the root or g. So that will be 2 root of uh, 5 minus x. Okay. And so the domain comes from the restrictions on that radical. Um, so I'm looking at 5 minus x and saying that that has to be greater than or equal to 0. Um, and so I can say 5 minus x is greater than or equal to 0, negative x is greater than or equal to negative 5, x is less than or equal to positive 5. So essentially I'm going to go from uh, negative infinity up to 5, so the answer will be b, okay? Negative infinity up to 5. Okay, good. Um, if f of x equals x squared plus 3, and g of x is x minus 7, determine the following. So now we're just looking at building equations. f plus g of x is defined as h of x, so we're literally just going to go x squared plus 3 plus x minus 7, and then combine them together. Okay. f minus g of x is defined as j of x. Now, the one thing you got to be careful with here, when you subtract a uh, binomial or any polynomial, what you're subtracting has to be in its own set of brackets because that negative sign will apply to everything, okay? Just a common little mistake that kids make. So that's x squared plus 3 minus bracket x minus 7, okay? So now you're going to have x squared minus x, and you've got a 3 plus 7, so that would be plus 10, okay? Okay, f times g of x, um, you're just multiplying those guys together. You can FOIL it out, x cubed minus 7x squared plus 3x and minus 21. And then x squared plus 3 over x minus 7 for f over g of x. Um, and I also noted there that x can't be 7 because of the non principal value that I have on the bottom. Okay, and then composition. So again, write it as the double set of brackets first before you start messing around with it. <clears throat> so n of x is f of g of x. g of x is x minus 7, so that becomes f of x minus 7, which means I'm going to take f of x and replace my x with x minus 7. So that's going to look like x minus 7 all squared plus 3. Uh, x minus 7 all squared is x squared minus 14x uh, plus 49 plus 3 would give me the 52. So x squared minus 14x plus 52 all together. And then g of f of x, well, f of x is x squared plus 3. So that means I'm going to go to my g equation and replace my x with x squared plus 3, combine like terms, and I get x squared minus 4. Okay, you're not going to write that in factored form. Um, you don't factor something unless you're told to factor something. So that's considered the simplest form. Okay. All right. Uh, if t of x equals the root of 2x plus 8, what's the value of t composed with t of 14? So that's t of t of 14. So I know that t of 14 is 6, and the way I figured that out is I just plugged 14 in here. 2 times 14 is 28, plus 8 is 36, and the square root of 36 is 6. Okay, then um, I plug it in for t of 6 then t of 6, 2 times 6 is 12, plus 8 is 20. So that's where I'm getting the root of 20. Uh, and then it's just said rounded to the nearest uh, hundredth, so I just use my calculator for that. 4.47. 4.47. Okay, if f of x is x squared plus 4 and g of x is x minus 4, the range of h of x, where h of x is defined as f of x plus g of x. So first of all, we're just going to come up with the equation. So I've got essentially um, 
h of x is x squared plus 4 plus x minus 4. So h of x becomes x squared plus x. Then I can just put that in my graphing calculator and figure out the range from there. Okay, you should be getting an answer of a. Uh, y is greater than negative 0 0.25. Okay, four graphs are shown below. Well, no scale is shown. The scale for each graph is the same. The function h of x is the result of multiplying three of these functions together. Which three multiplied together would give me this shape, essentially? So what I want you to think about is this. We're going to unpack this where the zeros happen, okay? So I see a zero happens there and a zero happens there, okay? I did a bad job of putting that line there, but if I do that same thing in every section, okay, what I'm doing is I'm gonna be able to now compare each section as to which one's gonna work. Now, in order to get the zero here, I need either three or four. So for sure I need either three or four. Then in order to get the zero on um, at the origin there, I need either one or two because that one gives me a zero. One or two gives me a zero at the origin. Okay, so that means my choices are really uh, 1, 3, 4, 1, 2, 4, 2, 3, 4, 4, 3, 1, 2. Okay, those are the only four combinations I can make here. So let's take a look. If I let's just pick on one, two, three for a second. Okay. So if I did one, two, three, take a look at the first section here for a second, I would have a positive times a negative times a negative. A positive times a negative times a negative gives me a positive. So it can't be one, two, three. Okay. So that guy's out. You see what I'm doing? Uh, two, three, four. Let's try two, three, four. So I would have a negative. Just looking at this first section, I'd have a negative times a negative times a positive. Again, that doesn't work. A negative times a negative times a positive would give me a positive and I need a negative. So now we're either at one, two, four or one, three, four. Let's try one, two, four. I'd have positive, negative, positive. So the first section would work. In the second section, I have positive, negative, negative. That would give me a positive. So that doesn't work. So either I've royally screwed this up uh, or uh, the answer is one, three, four. Let's try one, three, four. <clears throat> I would have a positive, negative, positive for the first section. So that works, that gives me a negative. In the middle section, I'd have a positive, positive, negative. So that also gives me a negative, that works. And in the last section, I have positive, positive, negative, which also works. So the only combination that would work is one, three, four. Okay. Okay. Use the graphs to determine the following. So f times g of zero is f of zero times g of zero. Well, f of zero is one and g of zero is one. And one times one is one. Okay. Uh, f plus g of negative one. Well, f of negative one is three and g of negative one is four. So I end up with three plus four, so that would be seven, okay? F of negative one minus g of negative one would be three minus four and that'd be negative one. And then f of three is negative five and g of three is four, so negative five over four. Okay, so I'm just reading my uh, h, or sorry, reading my y values off of there and then doing the math, either subtracting them or multiplying them or dividing them or adding them. Okay, the following arrow diagrams represent two functions. Use this information to determine 
f of g of 12 and g of f of 12. So, of 2, sorry. So, f of g of 12 means f of g of 12. So, the first thing I have to figure out is g of 12. g of 12 is 4. So, now I'm looking at f of 4. f of 4 is 11. Okay, so these guys are your inputs and then they arrow to their specific outputs. G of f of 2, well, that means I have to figure out f of 2 first. So f of 2 is 7, and then I'm looking for g of 7. g of 7 is 1. Okay. The domain of f of x is 3 to 10, and the domain of g of x is negative 6 to 5. Determine the domain of f minus g of x. Well, what I need you to see here is in order for the domain to exist in the new function, both of the original functions had to simultaneously exist. So the domain of f of x is from 3 to 10. The domain of g of x is from negative 6 to 5. And so the domain of the new function can only exist when both functions existed together, which means it'll have to be from three to five, okay? All right, if f of x equals x squared over x squared minus nine and g of x is x root of x minus four, state the domain of h of x is f composed with g of x. Okay, so we got to build the equation here. Um, that's going to be f of g of x, which means g of x goes in here first, which is the root of x minus 4. Um, you care about restrictions on the thing that you're putting in. So root of x minus 4, right away I have to say x has to be greater than 4. Okay, Okay. so now we're going to plug that into x for your f of x equation, so here and here. So that's going to give me root of x minus 4 all squared and then root of x minus 4 squared minus 9. Now the root of x minus 4 all squared is just x minus 4. So this simplifies to x minus 4 on the top and then x minus 4 minus 9 on the bottom, which is x minus 13. Okay, now I care then, I don't care about the restrictions on this fella because I never actually used him, okay? So I, we don't care about restrictions on that guy. We care about restrictions on the thing that I'm putting in and the function that I get out. So x has to be greater than 4, but x also can't equal 13. And so that's what the domain here becomes. x is greater than 4, comma, x can't equal 13, and then x is a member of the reals. Okay. All right. Awesome. So that's it for function operations. Um, and now, next up is we're going to start practicing trig. Yay! So I'll see you there.